Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Times flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Never doubt that a small group of citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. 45 years ago, a small group of individuals led by a man with a grand, some might say impossible vision, established an intentional community in the alpine foothills of Piedmont, Italy. Today, that community is a self-contained republic with its own constitution, culture, art, music, currency, schools, and uses of science and technology. Home to hundreds of individuals, it's also renowned for its artistic, spiritual, scientific, medical, and social research. In short, Damanhur is an example of the future the seed of a culture of peace that can inspire change in the world. And here with us today to share some of the mysteries of what many call a magical place is Dam and Her Ambassador, Crotolo Zesimo. Crotolo, welcome. Thank you. And thank you for staying up so late. I know it's <laughs> <just boring. laughs> It's absolutely a pleasure. Dam and Her, established in 1975, and it's a living example of what is possible when one has dreams and visions and goes out to create them. Tell us how it started. Well, you know, everything started in 1975 from, you know, the, the, the vision uh, uh, of, of this incredible name, uh, Oberto Iraudi in Daman or Falco. And Falco, well, you, you can... You can say many things about Falco. That he was, you know, an artist. That he was a visionary man. That he was, you know, a little bit crazy. But many times he just said that he was a person able to remember, remember from where he was coming from, and remember why he was here. And definitely, he was here for for an important mission, for an important task. And this task was Damanor. So Falco was starting to put together in the 70s the idea and the spiritual research into the everyday life. So not only the spirituality that you are imagining or theorize, but really the spirituality that is bringing to make change into your everyday life, into the matter. Where You say that he remembered where he came from. Where did he come from? Well, you know, there's many stories about Falco, but definitely the one that probably matched better is the idea that he was coming probably from from a future, from a moment of time where probably the things was not going so well for the humankind. And and part of his mission was to come back enough in time to create something different, to create maybe another timeline, and in this timeline to create an instrument that it would be a sort of spiritual accelerator for the humankind, so an instrument to woke up the consciousness of people. Well, of course, we're talking about Damanur. And when we talk about this, of course, we're talking about an impossible or maybe possible time travel from the future to the past. This is the kind of thing that people make movies about, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, of course, because it's actually not only, you know, you, uh, our dreams, but also, you know, the truly belief of this true is not true. Can I really uh, travel in time? Do I'm here, you know, for a specific reason? So this is all element that we deeply, you know, feel inside that they are actually really true. But it's, it's always beautiful when someone else is, is trying to tell you that this is true. And he really stuck to his vision, didn't he? I mean, you know, I'm sure that many people have dreams, but they don't know how to fulfill them. Exactly. And this is probably, you know, the most powerful things, the most magical things that Falco did. And I mean, uh, I, was, I was really lucky to be close to him for many different reasons and for many different projects. 
And I mean, he was not just a visionary man. So he was a man able to bring the vision in, 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 into something practical. He was really able not just to theorize or to see things, but then to make them happen. Otherwise, Damora was not existing, the temple of humankind, that, as you know, is the largest underground temple in the world. It wouldn't be possible. So Falco was able not only to make it happen, but, I mean, I think that the most incredible thing that he did, it was the capacity to bring this vision, to make this vision not only his vision, but the vision of a community, the vision of a group of people, then able always to cross the limit, to cross what is the limit between possible and impossible. What is dream that for us are things that you can realize to fantasy that then, of course, are just simply, you know, you, you or our fantasy. That's the reason why we, uh, we call Damano the real dream. The real in the dream. true sense of a place where you can really realize which are your dreams. Now, you said that he came from the future, but Damon Hur has a unique connection to Egypt. Well, yes, you're, you're pretty true, because, well, the same name Damano is coming from Egypt. Well, uh, I just came last uh, October from a long tour in Egypt, and we went to Damano. And I'm not joking, because actually Damano is a, a city that is nearby Alexandria, and uh, the, the meaning of this name is City of Light. But what is even more interesting is the fact that in the myth of this Egyptian Damanur, they talk about an underground city where the initiates they've been prepared to the knowledge. So we took the name and the meanings of that Damanur in Egypt and we brought it here in Italy. And it's also pretty, fine, pretty funny because we are nearby a city here in Italy that is called Alexandria too. When did you first hear about Dam and Her? Oh, this was a long time ago. It was around 1988, and, you know, I was a, a young man, actually a tennis teacher, uh, you know, being born in Turin, and Turin is the largest city nearby Dam and Her. And, um, you know, the, when people are talking about an inner voice, well, I always had, even if I was very young, an inner voice that was telling me that it was a place where I have to go and live my life. But, of course, you know, sometimes you believe, sometimes or many times you don't believe to this inner voice. And when I start to enter in contact with Damanor, and you have to remember that at the time, Damanor was really a small community. So we talk about 60 people. Now we are about 1,000. And the temple was not known because we built the temple in secret. So at the time, it was in secret. Nobody knows about that. So when I met Damanor, you know, before it was like you know entering contact with you know this crazy you know alternative community but then i remember clearly even now that has been past 28 years the first time that i put my first step in damanor i mean my inner voice was literally screaming inside of me saying this is the place this is the place where you have to be and actually it was true because i mean since that day i completely transformed my life to become a damanorian now I understand that Falco was looking all over the world for the perfect place to build this community, and he found it pretty much in his own backyard. <laughs> what was he looking for? <laughs> this is a very interesting question. Yes, it's true. We, we create Damanor, and Falco was looking for the best place to create Damanor, not just because, you know, we are Italian and we love Italy, but this is all about the research into the energy lines of the planet. I mean, there's so many traditions in the past talking about this concept, but if you want, it's also the concept of Gaia, of the idea that the planet Earth is not just, you know, based on a physical method of morphology, but the, the planet is also surrounded by energy lines, and these lines, when they are crossing, they are creating, you know, sort of meridians of the planet, so source of an incredible energy, or if you want, also an incredible information because energy is information. It's what in the past they've been, been mentioned with the name, the point of the back of the dragon. And many times the symbology of the dragon or the big snakes was representing, you know, this huge movement of energy in the planet. We call them synchronic lines. And we talk about 18 of them, nine moving horizontally and nine moving vertically. And again, yes, we talk about the meridians of the planet when these lines are crossing together. 
two, three, four lines. And in the history of the humankind, always, uh, when there, there, there was one of these crossing points, there was important civilization or important cities or pyramids or temples or sacred places. So what people don't know so much is that these lines are moving very slowly, but they're moving into the millennium, of course. So at the time, we talk about early 70s, Falco didn't have the completely map of the synchronic lines. So he started with a group of people to travel physically all over the world to try to complete the map. And then in this point, doing many different research in terms of astral traveling, out of body experience, channeling, to finally find out which was the better point to create the honor. That for us, of course, it was about uh, the most important energetic point. And it's funny because when he complete the map and he discovered a point where four of these synchronic lines was, was crossing, well, you know, it's pretty humoristic because we always say that we are looking for the most important things and we travel all over the world to find this most important thing or this important place. And then we forget that the most important place is just right inside of ourselves. <laughs> and actually, Falco discovered that this important, unique point where four of the synchronic lines was crossing, it was just 10 miles from where he was coming from, from where he was born. So Damono is in Baldisseo Canavese, small city in the, in, in, in the Piedmont region of Italy, and he was born in Balangeo Canavese. So it was pretty, pretty funny. And are you talking about ley lines when you say synchronic lines? Well, let's say that it's very similar to what people are talking about ley lines. When we talk about the energy lines of the planet, it's, it's much more complex than to say about one kind of lines. I mean, actually, there is many different several energy lines. I mean, we can even actually map, you know, the, the room of inside of a, of a house. So, yes, definitely the ley lines can, can help to, to get close to this meaning. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and I'm speaking with Crotolo Zesimo, international ambassador of the Dam and Her community in Italy. After the break, Crotolo will tell us why Dam and Her places so much emphasis on science and spiritual philosophy. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on OM Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffey and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on OM Times Radio. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Um, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and I'm speaking with Crotolo Zesimo, ambassador and mystery school teacher at the United Nations award-winning sustainable community of Dam and Her. Crotolo, many people would think that Dam and Her is very new agey, but it's actually very practical, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I agree with you. So, of course, I mean, everything that is alternative, it looks a little bit new agey, but we are pretty grounded. I mean, of course, we're talking about topics about time travel, you know, 
or you know uh, out of body experience but at the same time that one is really a practical experience and we need to be practical because we want to be an inspiration we want to be an example for everyone in the world not only let's say spiritual people but every dreamer of the world that really wants to create a better different world now, you yourself specialize in fields of spiritual healing, ancient civilizations, and inner research. And at Damanhur, you place a lot of emphasis on uh, research. What kind of research? Well, you know, we, we like the idea to always push the limit a little bit forward. And the limit for us, it's, of course, the limit of the unknown, the limit of what we call the mystery that actually, well, is the mystery that we are containing. So we love to, to, to talk about more than people living in a community, talking about people that are spiritual researchers, so people that are really looking to discover the unknown and give constantly new meanings to meanings. We spoke earlier about the temples of humankind, which is probably what Damon Hur is most famous for. When um, Falco first founded the community, you know, after building places to live, you started working on the temples. Why were the temples the first thing? Well, you know, actually, the temple started in 1978, so already some years after the starting of the community. And to tell you the truth, it's not that Falco was pretty clear at the time to build, you know, uh, 6,000 square meters underground, you know, with no architect, with no engineer, but simply following the sacred geometry of the past. Uh, everything, let's say, started very organically, or, you know, all of the sudden, one evening uh, around the fires where Falco was waving a sign, and when he says that, you know, it was a falling star in the sky that everybody uh, saw, and then all of a sudden, in silence, he took some instruments, and then he started to dig, you know, behind this little house, and nobody knew what he was doing, but everybody was starting to dig too, and, and, and here we are. So we start this incredible adventure that is really the symbol of the impossible possible, or again, the, the symbol of what is the limit, and many times the limit is always the limit that we put inside of ourselves. So imagine really to, uh, you know, use the temple as a practical meditation where digging into the rock was really like to dig inside and then creating a new space inside, uh, outside was like to put new space uh, inside of ourselves. It was a great opportunity to, uh, yes, to make, to make the possible impossible. But nobody knew about the entire project. It was step by step piece after piece, and he was a great, you know, uh, uh, let's say, strategist to make everything possible. So it's a metaphor, really, then. Um, and that's why you call it, a, or some people call it, an alchemical laboratory, because we are also alchemical laboratories. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the, the, the temple represents, in a certain way, uh, in the different chambers, like like a body, like a body of, of a human. And every chamber is, is doing a different function, a different uh, uh, element. And it's really, you know, something alchemic, because it's the pure transformation of something that could be rock in something that is full of meanings, of significance, of values, of teaching, of knowledge. So it's really like to shape the matter and in, in, in a totally different way. It's like to spiritualize the matter, if you want. And the magic of this is this is all done by hands. So not something that is connecting to something supernatural, but really something about what you have, what I have, what everyone has. Hands that can transform the matter in something higher. And the architectural details, they follow precise code of form and proportions according to an ancient sacred language. Absolutely. So if you want, the, book, the, the temple is a sort of three-dimensional book. And who is coming to visit, or let's say how Falco was saying, 
coming to in a sort of spiritual pilgrimage because in the sense of the pilgrimage we have people that are not just visiting but people that are looking for answers so when you go inside of a temple when you walk around when you see this shape when you under this energy so you're starting to receive your answers whatever is the reason why you are there whatever brought you there so you are in a place that is actually one of the Nile source, as the Egyptian was used to say, but I mean, we're not talking about the physical Nile, the river, but we talk about the source of the knowledge, the source of the information that are going to, uh, let's say, um, unlock part of your memory, part of your mission, part of the program of why you are here back in this planet, in this life. So all of the different halls, the hall of water, the hall of earth, mirrors, hall of the spheres, the hall of metals, I mean, what, how are they different? What kind of experiences might one have in one that you probably would not get in another? Well, as you know, when, when, you, come, when you come to Damano, you can join the different programs of visit there is uh, the opportunity to, to discover the entire temple, but also to have, you know, uh, meditation inside of the different chambers. Because as I told you, the chambers are really connecting to different functions. So it's like to have, you know, like to go to the liver, to the lungs, uh, to the kidneys, and etc. So, of course, also there was a logic to build, to create before some kind of chambers and then others. So, for example, the Hall of Water, that is one of my favorites, that is actually the, the chambers with an incredible book of knowledge just paint all around the walls. It's a place of memory. It's the place of the reawakening. It's the place of the reincarnation. In the truly sense of coming back uh, to continue the, the, the mission, because sometimes the mission is not just about this life, but it's also about, you know, a soul program that you have to achieve in, 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 in more than one incarnation, actually. We believe that the Damon project, I mean, is going to last until, you know, we're going to complete the program, the stuff from the future, from where Falco uh, came from. Now, if one goes to the website, thetemples.org, one can see videos of the temples and the different halls, and the art is just stunning, breathtaking. The people who made this art, I mean, they weren't all artists, were they? How is it that they produce such beauty? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is actually also one of the seminars that we're teaching. So teaching the fact that everyone is an artist inside. And we can prove that because everyone that now in Damano is working in the different uh, art laboratory, and you know that we have our laboratory of the clay, of of the of the Tiffany glass, of the of the paintings, of of the of the mosaic. So all of these Damanoians was not professional artists, but we become artists and we become professional. Because actually, we need it for the temple. Because, I mean, to carve the rock, it's an important step. But then you have to bring all the meanings, all the elements inside of this. So you need the art. The art is this universal language that actually is not only talking about the form, but also talking through the emotion, through the feelings. So we need it. We need it to fill the temple with all of this. And because, I mean, the deal was that we was the only one to create the temple. So there was not hands of someone else coming from outside of the community. So we had to try. We had to do, for example, Tiffany Glass. And of course, we make also mistakes, but look at the result. It's pretty good. So that means that, come on, if we did it, actually, not even with so much money at the time. So let's say everybody can do it, actually even better. <laughs> So everyone that now is working in this incredible laboratory of art, they was absolutely not professionals, but they become professionals thanks to the temple. You were personally trained in art by Falco, weren't you? Yes, yes, absolutely. So how did he train you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes the train was just to put myself in some very uncomfortable situation, you know. <laughs> we... 
we was used to say that, uh, I mean, uh, Damano is a sort of university of life. So Falco, it was training uh, as me in, in many different ways, but many times the training was really like, okay, we have to do this, now we're going to do it. <laughs> and it's actually what, what we crossed many times in many different situations. So, of course, uh, Falco was a, an incredible teacher, uh, teaching also in a way that is not based on words, of course, but it also works in dreams, in energies, in, 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 in telepathy and everything. But everything needs to be then brought in on the practical level. So many times, hey, you really, you know, uh, help me to push, you know, my limits. So would he say to you, you know, I, I want you to paint this area here and I want you to paint a flower or a something or other? Or did he say, paint whatever is coming through you? Well, you know, sometimes he was uh, really good in creating the situation where it's not that he is going to tell you what to do, but you have to find out what you have to do. That is, that is very different. That is actually the big difference between the idea of the guru or the idea of a spiritual master. We always say that, you know, people are looking for guru. I mean, with all the respect of the, you know, uh, sacred ideas of the Indian guru. But the idea of the guru is, oh, please, can you take the responsibility of my action? Like, guru, guru, can you tell me what job I have to do? Or guru, guru, uh, can you tell me who I have to marry it? or what I have to dress or what I have to eat? Because we are trying to find another father, another mother that is taking care of our responsibility. And if something is wrong, it's not our responsibility, but it's guru responsibility. Well, Falco yeah. was not a guru at all. Falco was a spiritual master. So someone that was always bringing you in the situation where you had to choose. And of course, you can also choose something wrong. <laughs> okay. Of course. But you have to use your free will. So you have to, number one, Cotolo, take your I'm going to have to hold you right there. We'll be back okay. in a few moments. And I'm eager to hear more. Don't okay. go away. Okay, we'll be back. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers. Live, on air, every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Own Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is OTRFM, part of the iOM Radio Network. the training that Falco gave you mm -hmm. yeah 
yes, and what I was sharing with you is really, you know, the capacity to use the free will, the capacity to use your choices, but most of all, to be responsible of that. So Falco was really training us always to take the responsibility of our action. And I mean, it looks pretty obvious, but if you think about it, I mean, this is one of the big issues of this planet. So people at the end are really not really taking care of their responsibility, not just once, but also in time. And if Damanor is so successful, it's because, you know, every one of us, for the different kind of things that we're doing, uh, well, everyone is really taking care and responsible of what they choose. And this is the secret of every successful reality. Because if you don't have people that are taking care of the idea that they are responsible of everything, even if they're just cleaning the floor, so things are going to be really in trouble. Now, many years ago, more years than I care to remember, I read a book called The Secret Life of Plants that was absolutely fascinating and it contained details of Cleve Baxter's research using electrodes on plants to find out that plants have feelings. At Dam and Her, you have something called the music of the plants. Tell us about that. Oh, yes, this is, this is a machine that actually we invade in, invade, invented, sorry, uh, in the 80s. And it was, you know, a machine pretty revolutionary for the time because we mm, invent something able to read the electrical conductivity that every life forms is creating, also plant. So through a sensor connecting to a leaf, and a sensor connecting to the, to the roots. So the machine was reading the electricity, the, 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 the pulsation of the different electrical uh, element that the, the plant was creating, and then translated into sound. Of course, what we had in the 80s is very different from what we have now, because you can imagine that now you can have you know, a small synthesizer in a, in, a, in a small little box. So. What we call the music of the plants is really the demonstration that the plants are not only alive, but that they are communicating with us. They are constantly trying to give signals, to give messages to us. And the machine is simply translating these messages into sound. And it's amazing to see how the plant is, is answering to the thoughts, to the attention, to uh, uh, the, the, the gesture that the person can do towards the plant. I mean, good or bad, of course. And for us, this is also not only a way to, to make people aware of the fact that plants are not just green things around us, but they are really alive beings. But it's also the hope to, uh, let's say, to touch the sensitivity of the young generation, of the kids, that they might grow then with another consciousness about plants and another, let's say, respect about the ecosystem and about, you know, the plants world around us. So this is the hope and is also uh, the opportunity for many of the owners of this machine to really research in the communication between plants and, and humans. Fascinating. Now, you also have very talented people who create um, Selfica, specialized tools that use intelligent energy and that have specific functions in healing and technology and wisdom. Tell us about that. Well, the Selfica is definitely one of the many uh, extremely fascinating field of research of Damana. We can always, almost say that Selfica came with Damana at the same moment. And when we talk about Selfica, we, we talk about this sort of ancient knowledge or ancient science in a sort of way comes from the name self but this is not english this is ancient language and self means spirals just to remind us that we are surrounded from uh, many different uh, geometric for or sacred geometry able then to catalyze the vital energy in many different ways and the spiral is one of the most important not only because we find the spiral as above, so below, so inside of the DNA, as in the shape of the galaxies. But just to remind us that all over the planet, 
many different civilizations, they've been used the symbol of the spirals or the symbol of the labyrinth, because many times spirals was also combined with the labyrinth, to catalyze the, the, this different vital energy. Then, of course, if we add the element of metals, crystals, and other materials to this sacred geometry, well, we start to talk about selfigas, so practical tools able to catalyze intelligent energy at our service, or if you want, at our support. What is your role at Dam and Her, and what are your responsibilities? Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, at, at the moment, my, my main responsibility is being an ambassador of Dam and Her, and this is not only a great honor, it's also because just recently brought me to, uh, uh, to talk, to represent Dam and Her at the United Nations in March uh, for the day to the Global Day of Happiness, but my specific, uh, let's say, skills is also the, 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 the talent to open new center, new reference point for them all over the world. And I already opened uh, several centers, and in the United States in 2007, I started what now we call Damanor Colorado, that is the largest and more important embassy of Damanor in the United States. So... If somebody said, I want to start a community in my area um, and I'd like it to be modelled on the Dam and Her community, would you then come to that community and you know, show them how it's done? <laughs> well, actually, there is um, a very specific and pretty popular seminar that we're teaching all over the world that uh, has this title, so How to Create Successful Intentional Community. That means that it's also part of our vision for the future, the idea that the planet will be based on thousands and thousands of different communities. That means a different community of people able to dream something new, or at least to dream in what they want to dream together. And because after 40 years, so we have a little bit of experience in terms of uh, human dynamic, group things, or issues about responsibility or leadership or power or conflict. So what we're doing is practically to help people to understand, number one, what is a community? Because also the terms intentional community, I mean, it's being used for very different things. But actually also to help people to see which is the path to create a, a community on a very practical level. And the practical level, of course, need to involve leadership, economy, conflict, growing numbers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the aim is not to create other Damano community, but the aim is really to help people to find and to create their community. So based again in their dreams. And we always say that every dream is in the respect of the other dreams. So that means that we can really create a lot of diversity that is what this planet needs so much. When you get a lot of people living together, and I know at Dam and Her, people live in what they call nucleos, which might have 20, 28 people living there, it's not uncommon <laughs> to find, you know, that people start developing factions and all kinds of uh, resentments and, um, you know, things go on. How do you manage the community? How does the community work together and stay in harmony? Well, Number one, we have always to imagine that uh, it's really important to share the same language. Wait a moment, I'm not talking about you know Italian language, but language, it's really about the same values language. And this is what, you know, sometimes community uh, are missing. So people are starting to live together because maybe they have a land, maybe, you know, they like each other, maybe because they want to save some money, but there's not really a common values, something that really gather these people to realize something bigger. The prize is the, is the concept of the dream. So the fact that Damanor is based on people that are all spiritual researchers, all in the aim of changing themselves or putting themselves always, you know, in a position to put light where there is still not light. Well, it helps a lot because it means that at the end, 
I can have a conflict with you, I can disagree with you, but at the end we are working for the same direction, for the same dream. So this is an incredible glue that for us, of course, is a spiritual glue. And then, and then what? Well, we can always say that, I mean, we're not different than other humans, so, and we don't have to be scared about conflict. If the conflict, for example, it's an opportunity to grow, it's an opportunity to change something, because conflict for conflict, it doesn't, it doesn't really, you know, it's not so spiritual. But if I can use, you know, the conflict to make things change, well, then I create something that is an instrument. So these are just few of the many elements because I have to tell you, the human alchemy it's one of the most difficult alchemy. <laughs> in the world. Yeah. And it's a constant, you know, change because like like an alchemy substance can really change constantly. So it's like to find equilibrium in the constant disequilibrium. And it's also probably the reason why the life in Dhamma is never boring. Yes, turning base metal into gold, eh? So, uh, who makes the decisions? Well, we believe in leadership, to tell you the truth. So, actually, we are believing also in the fact that everyone is a leader. So, not only what is a natural leader, but you can also create leadership. And we are encouraging people to, let's say, to become leader. Because leader also means the capacity to not only to take responsibility, but also to bring this responsibility at the service of the others. So, well, we are pretty democratic, so we took our decision, you know, by, by uh, uh, you know, vote. Votes that are not secret, but are evident to everyone. And we create, let's say, a structure where everyone is going to, you know, uh, have responsibilities and tools to how to use this responsibility. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer and I'm speaking with Crotolo Zesimo, ambassador of the Dam and Her community in Italy. After the break, Crotolo will share details of some of the subjects that you can study at the Dam and Her Mystery School. We'll be back in a few moments. Don't go away. Listening to OTRFM of the IOM Radio Network. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Elia, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. award-winning sustainable community of Damanhur in Italy. Crotolo, Damanhur's Mystery School offers a three-year curriculum that leads participants on an intense journey of self-discovery. But you also have lots of really short courses that people can come um, to Damanhur for. 
Yes, absolutely, because in any case, it's important to make the spirituality available for everyone. I mean, everyone can have, you know, different level of approach in spirituality, so we need to give them all this kind of approach. And what I think it makes, you know, very charming our seminars is, again, how we approach every kind of, 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 uh, of topic. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's astral travel or we're talking about past life research or we're talking about personality or spiritual physics. So all the seminars are, again, pretty practical. So, of course, there is things that you have to learn, but at the end, I mean, everything is based on experience because when you, what you brought back home is not so much about new books or, you know, new talking, but it's really what you did, what makes you, you know, enrich yourself of a new experience. So, and the fact that Damanor is actually based on, you know, truly real experience, that makes, you know, the Damanor teaching and the mystery school of Damanor pretty interesting compared to others. Now, you obviously have many families there and children and schools and um, you educate the children. In the 28 years that you've been living at Dam & Her, you've seen the product of the uh, specific education that you offer to these children. Uh, say a little bit about that. Well, you know, sometimes I'm used to say that I would love to be a Dam & Her kid <laughs> and, to, and to do the life that they are doing and to study the things that they are doing. And I'm not joking because you can imagine. I mean, these uh, these young souls, you know, be in a in a clean environment where nobody is smoking, nobody is taking drugs, uh, everybody is willing, you know, to become a better person. Uh, in an environment uh, uh, so rich of so many subtle important energy, and then to study, you know, not only what you what you can study in a school, in a regular school, but also study the things that you will never find in a regular school, you know, how to talk with the plants, the meditation, the history of the, the real history of the humankind, and many, many other things that are preparing our kids not so much to become the Manoreans, because we know that they have to make the, cha- the, the, the choice that we did. So in a certain way, we are preparing free thinkers, so people able then really to live the life that they believe is their life. If it's going to be that one, of course, we will be happy. But we will be at the same time happy if they're going to realize themselves for what they feel and think is their life. I'm sure that after experiencing Dam and Her, many people immediately want to come back and live there. How easy is it for people <laughs> to become part of your community? Well, this is true. You know, it's 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 easy to fall in love with Damaner, and then we say, at Falco, we say, well, you know, not everything is perfect. Not everything, you know, is so beautiful. Why? Because, I mean, uh, I mean, there's many different levels, and I'm not just saying that you know everything looks good and then it's it's it's, it's bad. Eh? But again, Damaner is really a practical experience, and uh, for who wants to become a Damanuian? Well, we say. Okay, you are in love with Damano? Well, join us for at least six months. Uh, live the experience of be with us, living with us, researching with us, working with us. And then after six months, you can really see if it's true love in a certain way because you don't want to marry, you know, the first person that you are falling in love. You want to test a little bit if the relationship is going to be good or not. But at the same time, yes, there is many levels to then you know, become citizen of Damanor or just living close to Damanor. I have to tell you, there is now a really large international community of people that are buying, you know, land and houses around Damanor, even if they are not living in a community, because, I mean, they love the idea of being in a, in a valley, in a place in the world where people, they are living and approaching life with the same, with the same ideas. But... If you want to try, there's also another very interesting program that I can uh, uh, suggest for everyone that is called the New Life Program that is about three months. And for these three months, you're going to live in our nucleus, in our houses, with us. You're going to eat, you're going to sleep, you're going to dream, you're going to work like a demonuia. Just really to have your personal experience of how it is to live in a community. 
So what would happen if, um, you know, me or someone else came to Dam and Her, took part in, you know, the three month or the six month program. And at the end of it says, yes, I want to come here. I want to stay here. You know, do all of the uh, people who already live there get a chance to vote on whether they want me or not? <laughs> Well, it's not so much about voting, but this is really about life. So the Dumbledore life bring you, let's say, to express who you really are in, in one sense or another sense. You know, sometimes we are laughing, you know, seeing about the new citizen because the first three months is like the honeymoon, you know, <laughs> everything is perfect, everything is so good. Well, after that, we know that the person is starting to be, you know, who the person is. I mean, not because, you know, someone is trying to hide, but because it's natural. When you yes. are entering a new situation, you want to offer the best of yourself, and this is totally fine. But let's say here we are living together, not only because it's fun or because we spend less money or because, you know, it makes us so unique, but we choose to live together because living together is the better instrument to accelerate your personal transformation. Because it means that then you have so many mirrors around you, constantly mirroring who you really are and in which part of you you have to change. That's the reason why you, you, we choose to live together. That means that, of course, I mean, we have to bring the light where there is still the dark. And, I mean, everybody is wonderful, but we also know that everybody has to change. There is something to change. So, And it's the same thing. So it's not that you have to vote, but simply you have to see if... That person, in our slang, it's a cork. So it's really part of the mission. It's really part of the soul that I bring it back to realize this incredible adventure called Damana. Presumably, the people, you know, new people who come eventually um, are contributing to the community, perhaps working in the community or teaching, perhaps? Well, you know, the, 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 the goal of, of, of us is to have enough, you know, activities to uh, have every Damanurians to work inside of Damanur, because this is obvious. I mean, we spend, you know, so much time of our life in working, and you can imagine how precious it is to work in something that is not just an activity to make money to survive, but it's an activity that is to support your dreams. And actually, you know, side by side with people that they have the same aim, the same idea. But of course, I mean, this is challenging because not always it's easy to create businesses or activities able then to sustain themselves. So when you create a community, when you grow in a community, there is always, again, a balance that you have to find between, you know, what you need and what you want to create. Uh, the, the testimony of your thoughts, of your meanings through objects, and then the capacity to make them, uh, you know, possible. But, of course, let's say, the 80% of the Damanuians, I would say, that are working in some of our 60s different activities. And you, I mean, people come to you um, to mark certain, um, you know, uh, important dates throughout the year, like the solstice and the equinox, uh, as well as coming, you know, for all the different uh, courses that you offer. Yes, absolutely. Well, you, you mentioned, you know, solstice and equinox. Just to remind you that, of course, we are celebrating not only what are the most important rituals during the years, but also the moment that are the truly reconnection with the nature, with the rhythm of, uh, with the, the rhythm of this planet. It's really like to uh, enter in connection with, with moment where uh, we are, let's say, connecting to everything and everyone. Uh, so people, of course, are coming mostly in this period of time, but all, all over the year because uh, Damano is becoming uh, more and more a meeting point of, of people with the same idea of life. When you, um, I know you travel a lot, Quotelo, when you get back to Damano, what is the first thing you like to do, the first place you want to visit? Oh, <laughs> well, actually, you know, to tell you the truth, uh, probably the place where I like to be, well, there are two. One is the temple, of course, and the other one is what we call Damil. 
the mill is actually the capital. It's really the, the first place that we establish and, 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 and build and create. So the mill for me is still, you know, uh, even if I'm not living in the mill, it's still, you know, my, my, my home. So when I'm there, oh, I'm really, you know, reconnecting with, with the energy of that matter. Crotolo Zesimo, I know it's late there in Italy. Thank you so much for staying up to speak with us. And I will be <laughs> seeing you in person in a few weeks' time, and I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be excited because this is really is going to be really a very powerful uh, trip. And I, I think that many people will, will change their life through this trip. <laughs> well, I look forward to you changing mine. Thank you, Crotolo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the next time. Thank you. Well, for more information about Dam and Her, you can visit damandher.org. And if you want to view those extraordinary temples, you can watch videos at thetemples.org. And if you are the kind of person who likes doing things on the spur of the moment, there's still time to join me on this trip to Dam and Her. Go to Jennifer Ivanko. Dot com. Look under journeys and find out about the trip that I'm going to be taking. I hope I'll see you there. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. Thanks for being with me today. I look forward to being with you at the same time next week. Till then, it's goodbye from me.